and he holds onto this railing to make sure he gets up and he gets shocked and it blasts him across the floor during this concert and he's knocked out for like half an hour. Inspired by the adventures of our nurses, therapists, and techs, A Beer with Atlas is the only healthcare traveling, craft beer drinking podcast. Each week, we'll open a few beers, talk about the brewery and the style of beer, and then dive into some research curated specifically for each episode. In the end, we hope each one sounds like a conversation you'd have with your friends while enjoying a few cold ones. Welcome to another episode of A Beer with Atlas. I'm Rich. I'm Brian. <laughs> clearly, clearly Brian is in character today. I tried uh, not to scream into the microphone. <laughs> That's right. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Dolan, have you ever... Uh, Dolan pushing the buttons and making us sound silky smooth there on the, uh, on the keyboard there in his living room. Dolan, uh, you've been in lots of bands over the years. W- would you ever categorize one of your bands as metal? Yeah, I was oh, in yeah. a metal Hell band. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was in a metal band called um, It Doesn't Exist Anymore, so I'm just going to say the name and you're free to take it if you're thinking you're going to start one. Okay. It's called uh, Product of the Broken, so dark, oh. you know? Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> mysterious. Did you have long hair? I did have long hair, yeah. 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 Brian, were you ever in a metal band? I know you've no. been in some bands. No. no, I have never been in a metal no? band. <laughs> no. And we instantly think of, dude, when I was in bands, I was trying to get chicks. I was not in the metal band. <laughs> before, before we started recording here, we were talking about our favorite metal bands because uh, the beer this week is from a brewery called Heavy Riff. So, in the Lou. In the St. Yeah, in St. Louis. Uh, yeah. In a place called Dogtown in St. Louis, which I'll get into in a little bit. It's oh, uh, okay. kind of interesting. And in uh, a, a borough or a, a uh, neighborhood in yeah. St. Louis called Dogtown. Uh, this week they have one. It's called Love Gun, which I believe is a – isn't Love Gun a um, – who was that? George Clinton? Wasn't that a George Clinton song? Mm, Pop Gun, I, know. I know, was a – Yeah, George I think that's a George Clinton. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Pop Gun, yeah. Uh, so this is a vanilla cream ale uh, brought to us by – uh, friend and fellow Atlas employee Aaron Biddle. Trainer it's a, extraordinaire. It's a it's a stone sour song. Love gun. Love gun. It's a it's go. a stone sour song. Um, mm. It's uh, also a kiss song. Apparently, mm. is is kiss metal? No. Uh, uh, I I would think kiss is metal. Yeah, isn't it? Guys, you are you are doing the work. <laughs> for me i love it thank you but okay so i've got my answer to dolan's question from 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 before my favorite metal band is corn i like okay corn. is that a metal band are they metal yeah yeah, yeah. they're I, new. well they they have the uh umlaut the new metal tag but it oh, still has metal in it right mm-hmm. i saw corn in concert a few times mm-hmm. never well, seen them i'd love to see them before their techno phase mm-hmm. I saw them when they were with like uh, Rammstein, oh. Limp Biscuit. I think Ice Cube was on that tour. Whoa! Wow. They climbed out of the Limp Biscuit came out of a big toilet on the mm. stage. <laughs> like it would have been like, like 97, 98, somewhere around there. Did they like bar bar like buy the old Guar toilet and might, they might have? Hmm. There was a huge toilet. I remember that Guar Family Values tour. I think it was called. That's old school metal right there. If you know who Guar is, oh, they still tour all the time. They're in Lincoln. They, they're like still a playing year. shows. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't uh, Odorous Arungus die not too yes. long ago? Yes. Yes. Bad. Yeah. Mm. R.I.P. Yeah. Too bad. Here's the thing that fools me about cream ales all the time. I when you say, "Oh, it's going to be a cream ale," you think, I think cream soda, don't you? Yeah. I do too. Not. Ooh, that smells like all. vanilla, big mm-hmm. time. Ooh. Smells good. Does smell like vanilla. Love gun. Hmm. Like so ASMR heavy video. Hold on. Vanilla. Hold on. Hold on. What are we holding for? No, you couldn't hear that. No. Oh, I barely. I can barely. I, can I was barely. pouring into my beer. It sounded uh, like an ASMR video. I was pouring that beer. Okay. It sounded so good. Four point six percent ABV. Really? 
on a cream ale. Oh, well, I mean, man. you got to start somewhere when the rock band. You can't be at you know crushing eleven percenters before you play. Look, four point six isn't metal at all. Four point six is Coors Light. Come on, <laughs> oh, hear no. me out. Hear me out. This it is why. Better, this is why at every concert you will see me just pounding PBRs for the same reason. You yeah. can go through a lot of them, still remember the whole show, mm. but yeah, coming home, you definitely want to pass out. There you go. <laughs> okay, it's perfect. Hmm. Yeah, I always took it easy too, Dolan. I was because I always had to. I was the singer, so I had to remember all the damn lyrics. <laughs> you can't be all messed up, and yeah, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Mm, I, can't see, wait to hear, I can't wait to hear your take on this beer because this is super interesting. The vanilla I... smells amazing, and it almost smells like there's this beer out of. I picked it up in Iowa, and they touted it as a white stout. So it looked just like this, and it had a vanilla smell to it. I'm going to take a taste and see what they called it was a white stout. So Weird. it was like not aged. It didn't, it had um, really roasted uh, the malt bill or the grain bill was like not dark. It wasn't roasted. It was just like straight up. Hmm. And that's what this reminds me of the smell of it. There's a, yeah, I'll tell you vanilla. I wonder if vanilla is hard in, in brewing. And now a lot of, a lot of beers will have vanilla, but I almost wonder if that's, if it's hard to, to perfect it because I've had a lot of beers with vanilla that have not been great. Depends on if you're using vanilla extract or actual vanilla beans, mm, Madagascar true. vanilla beans. Those are so expensive, but so mm. worth it. This thing, I'm going to go ahead and say it is pretty damn tasty. It is. I like it. It's sweet, but not too sweet. Nope. I like it as well. I like it a lot. Oh, actually, man, that's really good. I was and hesitant. It's there's almost that vanilla, like uh, when you breathe out. You know, mm -hmm. you get you get flavor when you breathe in. You get flavor yeah. when you breathe out. Not necessarily what you taste, but that vanilla flavor is still there. Yeah, kind of coats the tongue a little bit, which is you nice. know this might be out there, um, but last night I had New Belgium's uh, Nitro Brew, the hmm. their cream ale. Okay. Oh, and, okay. Um, it's very similar if you want to mm. something that's probably more distributed uh than oh, yeah. Belgium. Uh, yeah new belgium is right all around now so right a little, bit, a little bit more maybe what's it called the new belgium new, one the nitro brew cream ale mm. um hmm. very similar this one's a lot more vanilla e where that one's a little bit more coffee e but everything else around it is is really close i don't think i'd want to drink like five or six of these but no one is pretty good i'll tell you this might be one of the this might be the best vanilla beer i've ever had oh high praise maybe and we're in a town that has a vanilla beer that's touted everywhere i don't i i we didn't have to say either. that we sweet. didn't have to say that because hmm, yeah i'm just talked about i'm it. just saying there's a lot of different vanilla usually you'll see vanilla in stouts <laughs> That's usually where you're yes. going to find it in a pastry mm -hmm. stout. Yep. And kind of rare is it to find it in a beer that you can see through. And that's mm -hmm. what we've got today. It's, a, it's definitely interesting. So I'll dive into Heavy Riff Brewing Company. There's a, we have, we have a metal, a heavy metal brewing company not too far from us just down the street in Lincoln. Yeah, uh, Cosmic, Cosmic Eye. Eye. Yeah. I, I, I've had some of their beers. I'd love to do one of their beers on here. Um, yeah. Those guys are great. And and they've done they've done some pretty good stuff, mm -hmm. uh, but they are definitely a metal brewery too. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Even more, maybe more so than like Love Gun would be would be uh, a, a tame title for them. They've got some. They have some deep, crazy names. Oh, deep like dive. Enter the basilisk or like yes, yeah, zombies blood or yeah. yeah. Old old metal throwback, mm -hmm. uh, it, you know references in their in their beer names. So Heavy Rift was founded in 2013 by owner and brewmaster Jared Saffel. Jay, here, here we go. I, you know I have problems with names, right? <laughs> yeah, you do. Jared, J-E-R-I-D. Oh, yeah. That's, Saffel. that's a different one. Right, yeah. Isn't that weird? S-A-F-F-E-L-L. Saffel? S-A-F-F-E-L-L. Yeah. Saffel? Saffel? Who knows? Safel? Jared Safel? Jared Sorry, Jared Safel. Ooh, yeah, if he's Austrian, 
Jared yeah. Sheffel. I just totally Americanized his name. Yeah, I, it's probably Jared. Man, eh, probably Jared. Uh, along with Rick Hagen and Greg Meyer. So Rick and Greg, we got. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jared Sheffel. <laughs> Not so much. So. We could do a, a key and peel, you know. That's right. <laughs> a A Ron. Yeah. Rick. <laughs> Rick and Greg. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, the group, along with family and friends, uh, worked to open a brewery in the Dogtown neighborhood of St. Louis. The brew pub offers 25 tass, taps. This is super interesting. House smoked barbecue. Oh, dude, now, I looked at their, rest, their menu. Oh, oh, God. Did you look at that? You saw yeah, it? Yeah. Holy smoke. Total pun intended. Li- yeah, literally. Woo. I mean, St. Louis ribs are a thing, right? Like, oh. we can agree. They are. Yeah. I mean, it's a cut. Yes, yes. And uh-huh. I, yeah, I would go to this place. I don't know why Biddle's not working from here right now. Maybe he is. So, Biddle's talked about a couple other places here. So, in uh, out of respect for uh, Heavy Riff, I won't talk about the other uh, uh, barbecue St. places. Spot? Oh, yeah. barbecue. Okay. Barbecue spots. Okay. We've but we've been to a couple of pretty legit famous St. Louis barbecue spots before. Hmm. With I, didn't know, been, I didn't know the Lou was a barbecue St. Louis style, man. That's a, that's huh. a real thing. That's a real so thing. So what's the difference between Kansas City and St. Louis? Uh, sauce. The sauce difference. That's, uh, I believe, you know what? Let me look on the, let me, let me check. Because I don't want to. Just don't tell don't me it's to... mustard based. Then I have to Dude, have no, end that's, the Zoom that's call. Carolina, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. But I, you know, I'm just trying to be safe here. Hey, Zulu style. When I was down Zulu in numbers. Carolinas, I did. I not a fan of their barbecue sauce. Just saying. So, St. Louis style barbecue refers to spare ribs associated with the St. Louis area, usually mm-hmm. grilled rather than slow cooked over indirect yeah. heat. And they usually are. They're bigger. Like there's more meat on mm-hmm. them. They look so good too. Yeah. But yeah, we've been to more than a few uh, legit famous. Uh, maybe the first episode of Atlas Eats of all time was at oh. one of the few. I believe Dolan was there with me. That uh, were you there with me? You were. I was. I was. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. That uh, good. But anyway, St. Louis style barbecue, man. That's that's where it's at. I like I like Kansas City style. Let's just be honest. I like barbecue. I like Memphis, but okay. Is that dry rub? That's dry yeah, rub. Right? No yeah, no sauce. I do, I do enjoy me some dry ribs sometime. But yeah, they have a what looks to be pretty legit uh, barbecue offering and a playlist that spans the greatest rock music from the past several decades to timeless classics. So not only is beer, taps, and uh, barbecue important, their playlist in the brewery itself is very important to them as well, which I know plays to both of you. Yeah, a lot, right? Well, Cosmic Eye, I mean, I've been there, and that's yeah. that's their style of tunes. Uh, when Cross Train first opened, their tap room manager was a guy named Dennis, and he was a big like math music dude and metal guy, and but then he had a soft side too, which was awesome. Uh, but you never knew what you were gonna get, but it was always gonna be good. So I always look for that. If I'm gonna hang out someplace, they have to have good music, or I'm out. Like, yep, I I can't. I can't be around music that sucks. I will not be there. So if you see me someplace in public, I've, I've quality checked the tunes and, and they're okay. <laughs> uh, cross train up until the point of uh, you can't consume beer anymore. Thank you, COVID-19. Um, their playlist every time I was there was very 90s alternative. Yep. Very. So, which is totally fine with me. I was absolutely happy with that. So... Uh, the Dogtown neighborhood. So I've been to St. Louis a number of times, um, outside of their stupid baseball team. Uh, there's a lot to like in St. Louis. There, there really is. The breweries we've been to there are great. Uh, yeah, yeah. the food we've had there, the barbecue we've had there, like there's, a, there's so many fun. The, the museum downtown is great. The arch is awesome. Um, two or three Irish pubs that we've been to that I don't necessarily remember leaving, yeah. There's, there's been some fun, fun times. And like I said, outside of their stupid baseball team, where the stupid baseball team plays is beautiful. And mm. it is fun. It is fun. It, even as a Cubs fan going into St. Louis, I, I, we get called names for wearing Cubs gear. That's fine. I don't have an issue yeah. with that. It, I get it. It goes with the territory. When they come to Chicago and I'm there, I call them names. That's how it goes. It's a yeah. rivalry. 
right? So uh, I, I, I have a lot of, I have a lot of love for, for St. Louis, the town itself and, and, and the stuff there. The Dogtown neighborhood is an Irish section of St. Louis located south of Forest Park with the southeast edge uh, right at the traditional, uh, oh, the hill neighborhood. So the southeast edge is the hill neighborhood, which I've been in the hill neighborhood before. Okay. Uh, the neighborhood is anchored by St. James the Greater Catholic Church. And I'm pretty sure I've driven past that because it is enormous. Mm. Like one of the biggest Catholic churches I've ever seen. Like you would oh, think. Okay. You would like, remember this. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, okay. whoa, what the heck? Like that is a monster. Like it is, it is huge. Okay. So, Dogtown. Do you know where, do you know where the name Dogtown comes from? All I know about Dogtown is the uh, documentary about skateboarding. Mm, which is a great documentary about yeah. skateboarding. Yeah. So that's why I did a little research here because I was interested. Oh, like, same, here we go. Same kind of thing, right? Yeah. Maybe, kind of. Dogtown got its name from a small mining community, mining, uh, in the 1800s. There was a small concentration of clay and coal mines in that area, and the term Dogtown was widely used in the 1800s by miners to describe a small shelter around the mines. Hmm. So there'd be a whole bunch of mines, and then there'd be like a shelter maybe in the middle. Yeah. And that's, that, was, that was referred to as the Dogtown. Uh, the some erroneously i think this is funny because i double checked this this was some wikipedia information i thought well you know is this true uh an article that was published uh right around the time of the world's fair they thought was like where the, where dogtown was was originated and that ended up not being true at all there was another article published in 1889 so the world's fair was in 1904 in st louis yeah, yeah. 1889 uh in the missouri republican was the that was the earliest reference to Dogtown uh, in St. Louis in reference to mines in a mining sort of uh, so collection. 1880s, you say? 1889, yeah. Okay. Near uh, there was a there was a boy. So in 1889, the newspaper article described described a lost five year old boy who lived in the classic precincts of Dogtown near Cheltenham. Hmm. So there was a there was an area of St. Louis called Cheltenham, and he was probably uh, still at work, probably yeah. in the mine. He probably just hadn't come back out yet. Probably Ugh, back then, that's how it was. Yeah. Uh, so the term "dog" also appears in official mining terminology. There's dog holes, dog house, dog towns, dog mines. So hmm. not necessarily of the uh, of the canine. Three, yeah, canine variety. Okay but more of the uh, mining hmm. variety. So, so there you well, go. There was something some, today. Thank you. There was some mining around St. Louis at one point. Who, who um, would have thunk? No Clay idea. And coal, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe right there along the Mississippi River. Uh-oh, we talking about dogs. I hear oh, one. Dogs. Get them, dogs. Oh, the mailman is here. No, nope. uh, the wife is home. Hmm. Owen, are you drinking during the day again? Oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, okay, kombucha gonna, i swear yeah <laughs> i'm gonna let her walk in and then there she gonna is. say hi hi sam they're saying hi look yeah she's in the bed <laughs> there's a way to say hi to us <laughs> at all no no there we go i wouldn't either nope there we go so that's what i know about uh the dogtown area of st louis missouri i at some point when we go back again we had plans to go this year in fact i believe mm, we would have already been and come back um we were going to go for a meet and greet there in in may and go to a the uh the every year the st louis cardinals do a nurses day game where oh, they cool. have like they do like special t-shirts for nurses and so this year it said nurse instead of saying st louis or cardinals along their jersey yeah with the bat and the cardinal sitting on yeah. it, it said nurse in their font, in oh, that same cool. font, and then it had the like the cardinal sitting on it. I mean, they're one of the oldest jerseys, you know, like they haven't changed them for a long time. What's the hospital there? Or what's oh, the big system? But there's so many. So Barnes and Children's, Jewish, right? Yeah, there's a children's hospital there, Cardinal Glennon, Children's Hospital, Barnes Jewish is a big one that we've always worked with. 
SSM has a number of hospitals oh, yeah. there, which I worked with for many, yeah. many years, who uh, Aaron Biddle's wife works for right now oh. doing a residency at one of the SSM hospitals. Nice. Yeah. So there it you all go. comes back around, doesn't it? It all does. What is well, Aaron Biddle's official title here at Atlas? He's uh, the training manager. Coordinator. Co- yeah, manager. Training he's the manager. Coordinator manager. Yeah. 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 There's a long, and, long history in recruiting. And, uh, and he's also the, the first one to say, uh, so-and-so got their first placement. Give him a, a shout out. Yep. He does that. There you go. Yep. And he brings us beer from Missouri. There's a couple <laughs> others. Uh, ooh, in the next couple of weeks, there's one in particular coming up that I hope is horrible because we have to talk uh, about the stupid Cardinals again. Uh, like in depth. It? We're going to oh, get into God. it. No, it's I'm going to deep fun. dive. I'm going to just make you so uncomfortable. I might go through like each loss to the Cubs. Like the Cubs. <laughs> just get into box scores. And <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, there you go. So I wrote down because uh, as you kind of both of you talked about earlier, Love Gun. That's a, that's a music name. And at yep. first I was like, oh, why do I know that? And then I had to look it up and I was like, oh, yeah, that's why I know that. Uh, but before we get to the Love Gun, um, the whole brewery is musically like inclined, relatable in all the songs um, or beers are named after albums or bands or so- somehow there's music tied. So I wrote down a bunch of the ones that they had on tap currently, they said on their website the other day, um, that have a music um, tie in. And we'll run through them real quick and you can tell me if you know what they are or whatever. Um, they have one that's called Eat a Peach, which is. Seminal Almond Brothers band album. Mm. They have a beer called Disco Apocalypse. Because, you know, what's more metal than hating on disco? I mm. guess that's it. Uh, they have a brown there. You've been kind of getting into browns lately, Rich. Oh, yes. Velvet Underbrown. So not the Velvet Underground, but a ah. brown. Uh, they have a series. They have a sour series there called Layla. And then they just changed Layla. the... The fruit flavor. So there's a peach Layla, an apricot Layla right now, um, but that's their sour series. It's called Layla, which is a, eh, it's an okay song. I've heard it yeah. too many times. Yeah. Uh, they have a wheat beer called Squeeze Box, which is a great Who song. If you haven't heard that, check it out. <laughs> no, okay. Um, they have a Pilsner called Run to the Pills. <laughs> <laughs> which is that a, is that an Iron Maiden? That is an Iron Maiden yeah, song, right? yeah. yeah. So Run to the Pills, Pilsner. Yes. Uh, they have a New England style IPA. This is great. Do hops mesh. <laughs> so instead of do host, it's do yeah. hops. So <laughs> do hops in that New England IPA. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So do do host mesh, doesn't that mean I hate you in German? I don't know. I thought do host meant I hate, and do host mesh meant uh, said, is I hate you. So this would be I hops you. Yeah, I guess so. I love that. That's fantastic. All, all I know is that's their New England IPA. All right. And then they had another beer on there called Dolly Dagger, which is like a traditional blue song, but Jimi Hendrix has a good version of that. So okay. um, those are some of the beers they have on tap currently. And those names basically told me already, like what I needed to know, that probably the guy that's in charge is older um, mm-hmm. because those are a lot of older band references and names and stuff like late 60s early 70s yeah i was gonna say uh, mid 70s at least which is is where love gun rolls in mm-hmm. and as you talked about earlier love gun is a kiss song but it's also the name of their album and it came out in 77 and i will say um that their popularity kind of went down after this album this was their last big hurrah and i think that's because i was born in 78 and i came to put a stop to this shit Cause I'm not a, I'm not a kiss fan at all. Really? The best thing kiss ever did was be in the episode of Scooby-Doo. Mm. Uh, I hate kiss. I'm just going to say it. I hate them. I don't like it. That's one of those bands that people are really into. And uh, yeah, there it is. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I'm not into it. I don't get it. Some people are that way with the grateful dead. I'm just not, I just don't understand kiss. I just don't cheers to you. Just cheers. Cool. You. I mean, I know, I know Gene Simmons is probably your bass playing idol uh but yeah they're just not for me i just don't get the appeal your songs gave, aren't very good god gave rock and roll to you that's what they say i don't know okay. uh see 
you say Scooby Doo, I think their best thing was uh, Family Guy. So, <laughs> <laughs> but here's what we're gonna do because I'm open minded ish, we're gonna learn about Kiss today because this was their last kind of big album and it's really eh, it's seminal in a way. It was it went platinum the day it was released, so they sold a million vinyl records the day it came out, which is crazy to me. In 77? Yes, June 30th of 1977. Wow. Um, then they remastered it in 97, and then they remastered it again in 2014, and that means they'll probably remaster it again in about two years. So we'll see. We'll, we'll hang tight and see when the, the fifth edition comes out. Hmm. It was the first album of Kisses to ever have a vocal, a lead vocal by Ace Frehley. So this is before each of those guys had their own album. You remember that when they had the four albums that came out at the same time? Yes. And each guy had their own with their own face on the cover. Mm -hmm. This was precipitated by this album. So everybody on the album had a one song at least, kind of like the Beatles, uh, except the Beatles are a lot better, um, had a song <laughs> that they sang. And his song, Ace Frehley's song, uh, I wrote this down because I didn't want to have to actually listen to it. Uh, it's called Shock Me. So in 1976, he's at a concert, an outdoor concert, and he's coming up on the stage. They played already, but he's like coming up out of the ground or whatever, right? He's getting lifted up to the thing. And he holds onto this railing to make sure he gets up and he gets shocked. And it blasts him across the floor during this concert. And he's knocked out for like half an hour but Kiss being Kiss, they don't cancel the show. They just wait till he wakes up, <laughs> prop him back up, and then they play the show. Ace, Which, you okay? Yep. Duh. Nope. Like, cool. <laughs> Do it. So he writes a song about that, and that's his first song. He wrote it with Gene uh, Simmons in mind to sing the song, but Gene was like, hey, why don't you try to – this is pretty personal. Why don't you sing it? And that's how he gets his song on this album that he sings, and that's the first time he has one. Um, you, gotta, you gotta admit that's kind of metal, right? I mean, they just they just oh, yeah. took a, they just took a. He almost died. That's pretty. Yeah, metal. yeah, that's pretty metal. I'll give him that. Um, it's also the last album to feature Peter Chris on drums for the entire one. He started to really get into that rock and roll lifestyle of drinking and drugging, and so mm. the next album after that, I think, was Destroyer, maybe um which is another kind of famous album for them but he was only on one song so they had basically brought in somebody else and mm. they were i think they're the reason that spinal taps drummers exploded and died in the movie spinal tap mm. because they went through so many drummers in the late 70s to the 80s so mm. that's where that was uh in the album itself there was a cardboard cutout included uh that you could put together and make your own love gun so if you notice on the can art, what do we got there? The vanilla. Mm -hmm. There's a gun. So that's similar to what oh. the cardboard cutout looked like on that Kiss album. With like vanilla coming out of the gun. Yes. A little hmm. bit of that. Interesting. Um, you showed the album cover earlier. That was, that was painted by Ken Kelly, who was a fantasy, I guess that's the best word to put it, fantasy artist. He did a lot of paintings, hmm. of that sort of stuff. Um, he also did the Destroyer album. He was kind of into like dudes with axes and like shields and horns and futuristic uh, battle environments. Like that was the, his jam. Uh, he did albums, covers for bands like Manowar. So if you just Google them, you'll yeah. be like, oh man, look at this. Wow. There's, they have some cheesy covers. Yeah. Match it the same, that sort of stuff. Uh, Rainbow is another band that he did albums for. And then, as we talked about earlier, one of my favorites, Coheed and Cambria. He did some work for them, some art direction and huh. album work. So he's been doing albums for 40 years, um, album art. And he also does like book illustrations and just straight paintings. Hmm. So again, his name's Ken Kelly. And yeah, known for like swords and sorcery, D and D sort of stuff. Interesting. So he's the one that painted this, which is interesting because it's not really like a battle scene. It was mostly like the band with a bunch of chicks with face paint on. But hey, whatever. Did you just? We just had a. I just had a very Mark Marin moment here. Oh. Did you just hear the uh, guys outside uh, doing lawn work? 
<laughs> I did not. Guys outside doing lawn work right now, and I just yeah. You're like, ah, get out of here. Get out. I told them to come at two o'clock. We're talking about Ken Kelly. <laughs> So the album, uh, which I will not listen to, because I, you know, do you have a favorite Kiss song? Let's let's break off here for a second. Let me let me stop no. my anti Kiss Venom. Do you have a Kiss song you like? Mm. Is there any Kiss on your playlist? No, generally no. Uh, so I went and looked. I thought, okay, I'm gonna like popular, and I really just googled popular Kiss songs. Just to rock and roll all night. That's the sure. first. I was made for loving you was the number one, and then rock and roll all night. Um, Detroit Rock City. Yeah, okay. there was a movie called that. I think. Yeah, uh, I like uh, Strutter. Mm, mm. Heaven's Strutter. on fire. Yeah, Strutter's on here. God of Thunder. Fine. I guess I'll vote for Beth. Beth, yeah. Uh, it's slow. Tears are falling. I, here's the thing. I, I would vote for uh, God uh, gave rock and roll to you because that was in Bill and Ted's. There yeah, that's yeah. true. Do you remember when Kiss took the makeup off? I do. And they had like an unplugged concert. Remember that? They were on MTV. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a big deal. And, th- and we were like, oh, they're ugly. Then put they're the weird. Makeup back then, on. Yeah. Put, no, put the makeup back on. Yeah. Which wasn't they that, did. Uh, wasn't like Lick It Up. Wasn't that their first? Lick It Up. Yeah. yeah, wasn't that their first non makeup yeah, I think so. song? I could be yeah. wrong. One of them. Paul Stanley sang that one, I believe. Mm. Ugh, gross. It's and I remember when they now. put the makeup back on in like yeah. mid nineties or something, and they had a like a pinball <laughs> album cover. I don't know. Sure, they've always been around. I've never liked them. I think if Kiss is your favorite band, you've probably not listened to a lot of music. That's mm. just my feeling. These I actually know some. I know some dudes who Kiss is their favorite band. I do. My, one of my drummer in my first band, his favorite band was Kiss. And I'm not saying that's why he wasn't our drummer for a long time, but I'm just saying. Well, that metal band you asked me about. Yeah, um, got Kiss cover. No, the drummer in, in that band, their favorite band was Nickelback. So, Oh, oh boy. It oh. must just be drummers. But yeah. I'll tell you what, at least Nickelback didn't have face paint. <laughs> True. And they Maybe didn't sell their own brand of, of uh, coffins. It might have helped them. <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, so here's some of the songs I wrote down off this album. Because the album is like 10 tracks, but it's 30 minutes long or something like that. So these are short, basically power pop songs. These aren't metal. Okay. Uh, problematic Nowadays. Lead single, Christine 16. No. Because, you know, back then in the 70s, 16 was okay. It was okay, right? But now, uh, you're getting a phone call. And then Winger said, you know, Winger said she's, she's only 17. 17, right? You know, yeah. I think even Bon Jovi had something about that. Mm, maybe. Um, but guess what? On the, on the demos of this song, recorded, because uh, they didn't write the song, uh, Eddie and Alex Van Halen played on this. No way. So that this is kind of one of the first things they are known to have been involved with before they start their own band. Mm-hmm. Um, the song is basically about older men being seduced by young women. Yeah, mm. 70s rock. That's what the 70s are all about, man. Yeah. Uh, however, the song was sampled later in 1988 by Tone Loke for a song called Funky Cold Medina. No way. So if you've heard that song, then you've heard – Christine 16, at least parts of it. No. Um, another, then we talked about already Shock Me. We talked about Ace Freely getting his uh-huh. hair done by the oh. shock. And then there was the title track, which is Love Gun. And this is one of Kiss's big hits. I guess I'll use air quotes. Hits. Mm-hmm. It's been on every, every tour they've ever done. All 15 of their We're Going Away retirement tours. Yeah. yeah. They played Love Gun. Um, basically, they Paul Stanley wrote it. He said, oh, um, Booker T and the MGs wrote the music for this. And then uh, a guy named Albert King did the vocal. And this was in the late 60s. And uh, Paul Stanley liked it. So he basically just ripped it off and mm-hmm. stole it and then just repackaged it as a Kiss song. Uh, but guess what? Other people have done that too, and uh, including Ike and Tina Turner. So they have a version of that song too. Mm. Um, but they have to have like shared songwriting credits or something because it's basically the same thing. And I think if you ask Tina, like, you don't mess with Ike, right? I mean. Uh, you'll get the one, too. Yes, yeah. exactly. Mike check. Yeah. yeah. One, two. 
I would um, not condone violence towards women, but nope. you know, Ike would. Ike did it. Mm. But Tina, she got the last laugh. She totally did. Um, there's a song on there called Plaster Caster. Do you know about the Plaster Caster? <laughs> no. Dolan, do you know about Plaster Caster? Uh-uh. Oh, you guys. So <laughs> innocent. Mm. So in the late 60s, there was this girl named Cynthia Plaster Caster. She was an art student. An art student, I think, out of New York. I believe New York City. Or it was Chicago. One of those two places. Uh, her niche was, uh, and this is, you know, late 60s. So summer of love, 67. Uh, everything was, you know, no boundaries. Hippies everywhere. Uh, her idea was basically, you know what would be cool is, is my art thing. My, um, my, my, my way to make my name in the, in the world is to make plaster casts of these famous rock stars dongs and oh. that's exactly what she did so she really would go to concerts she would go to wherever she would meet people and uh her and a, maybe it's two or three other uh girls that were in the group would um you know prep the uh people mm. that were going to be had plaster casts made and then they would make these plaster casts like out of pa- basically clay or paper mache or whatever the hell you make a plaster cast with plaster, yep. I guess, like a footprint, yeah. like a okay. big foot footprint, except it's, uh, you know, some rock stars wang. Uh, and then she had a collection of them and then she put them in an art museum. Hmm. Her most famous uh, person was Jimi Hendrix. Uh, his okay. was uh, quote unquote, the biggest. And uh, they, they sat with him twice did two different ones uh there's quite a few but mostly they're like british rock invasion guys that led zeppelin was known to have been involved with this uh i think there's a documentary on her uh but she yeah was an art student like 21 or 22 right out of school and this was her mark on the world was plaster casts of rock stars penises how do uh, you so. how do you even like i, I don't even was she hey, attractive man. No, I don't know. I mean, it's the '60s. It didn't matter. I think she hung out even with the Grateful Dead, if I'm not mistaken. Jerry what Garcia, her, maybe. What was her name again? Cynthia Plastercaster. Cynthia. Cynthia. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, hey, guys. There's this lady named Cynthia here. She wants to take a cast of your dong. Uh, there's a, a. I was listening to. There's a podcast series out about. It's a whole year about Jimi Hendrix, and there was an episode about how they tracked him down and flagged him down, basically with uh in traffic saying hey we want to we want to do this and he was like real for real oh okay, okay cool and come up to my hotel and that's what they did um, so he's just like he's just like driving to the whataburger or something he and- was driving from practice <laughs> to back to the hotel and they were like hey we want to this hey. is what we do and they showed him a couple and he was like oh all right cool let's do this mm. uh, but yeah so there's a song on the album called plaster caster basically talking about her and how great it is uh oh. And then the last song um, was a gender reversed cover of the Crystals hit, Then He Kissed Me. So they called it Then She Kissed Me, so which uh-huh. came out, I think it was like 62, 63. Hmm. Kind of like a doo wop, um, female vocal sort of thing. Mm-hmm. I think, um, who's the producer that's in jail for murder right now? The mm-hmm. Wall of the, Sound guy. With yeah. The crazy that guy. hair. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Phil Spector. There we go. He, he's a songwriter on that one. So I think Peter Chris did that. Hmm. That was one of his songs. But they did a cover. So that was five, that's five of the 10 tracks on that album. But that's the breakdown of those songs. But I would suggest uh, off work looking up Cynthia Plaster Caster and her, and her, mm-hmm. uh, her work there's a there is a documentary out there that's pretty cool and uh oh she was featured in something i just watched recently but i can't i can't think of what it was that's fascinating not that i mean i guess the whole yeah the what how would you approach is it just the twig or is it twig and berries like you get what, what do you what do you i think it was mostly the whammy bar okay well hmm interesting and did yeah, I don't even know. This could get really. Yeah. Uh, this could go sideways real quick here. Yeah, it so could. I but I, I mean, it is adults. That's why I thought I could bring it up. But I suppose so. Yeah. So could could like um I I don't know could could some like latex company buy these castings and then produce? I think actually that might have happened. Wow. Yeah, I think that I think that might have happened. So you get like. 
I think you could lie. And then you get the yes. Robert or the Robert, Robert Palmer, Plant. Robert yeah. Plant. Yeah. I, why do I always get those two? I always get Robert Plant and Robert Palmer. Well, they're both British singers from the seventies that had mm. rock bands that had popular songs in the eighties. Also, mm. uh, that might be why. R P is the initials. Yeah, That's there why. you go. Yeah. Could I get the Jimmy Page? Uh, uh, I think he had one too. I think it was Page and Plant. I don't think John Bonham or, or um, John Paul Jones in, were involved, but I think it was those two guys. Was it a two-pack? It was pack? only like – You got a two-pack of that maybe? Yeah, yeah. I think it was like a, you know, a bonus. Uh, there was only, I think, four, <laughs> 13 or 14 of them made, so there wasn't like a whole uh-huh. bunch of them. Um, but, yeah, the, the pictures I've seen online – Jimmy's is definitely you. You know it's his. Let's just. Mm. <laughs> You're like, oh yeah. yeah, there's the Jimmy one, and there's everybody else. <laughs> Somebody's got the full collection on their wall. I know it. Maybe. I know uh, it. Let me tell you. Let me look it up real quick because I have it right. I now. didn't know that uh, you brought up Peter Chris. I didn't know that um, they had so many drummers and lead guitarists. Yeah. I I thought that. Um, their one drummer died and that was it. I, I thought all the other members were the same. I didn't know that they went through so many member changes. Last I heard, it was either, I think Peter Chris was like homeless and living under a bridge for a while, like for wow. years. Had like, I think a big alcohol or drug problem. Um, Ace Freely has been out of the band for mm-hmm. a long time. Pretty yeah, much just was... Paul and Gene is, is Kiss. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and that yeah. was the thing. Like I thought Ace Freely was always the guitarist. Mm -hmm. Um, but looking at it, they had five different lead guitarists, uh, in the band. Um, after Ace, there was a Vinny, a Mark and then a Bruce. Yeah. Vinny Paul, I think, or something like that, wasn't it? Vinny, Vinny Vincent. Vinny Vinny Vincent. Vincent, That's right. Yeah. The Egg Warrior. Uh, spawned a great hair metal band, Vinny Vincent Invasion. There you go. Which I saw open for... Mm, poison i think oh, cc deville's group nice. but see yeah. he was only in the band for for two years two let's see what it long enough see. yep two years from 82 to 84 dude kiss was huge yeah i mean they they are still the most marketed band of all time they have more products than anything else any other band that's ever been around even and the D- they still aren't in the rock and roll hall of fame right that's because they're not very good the uh podcast i was talking about earlier about Jimi hendrix is called the 27 club and it's like a secondary podcast uh of one called disgrace land which i started listening to which Mm. is a mesh of music and true crime so it's all about like the most famous bad thing that's happened to a lot of famous musicians and then the same guy that did that he won a couple of awards for that podcast so he spun off this one Mm. and he talks about um, there's going to be uh, allegedly seasons about all the people that died when they were 27 uh, in the 60s. Oh, yeah. So Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, Jim Morrison, and then later Kurt Cobain. So yep, that's mm-hmm. the 27 Club. There's a there's a lot of names on the 27 Club that that I've never heard of. I didn't know that it was um, that big uh, of a of a club. <laughs> hmm. I don't know when you're only five years away, so no. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> four, so. four, four years, 20, 23 plus. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, four. Yeah. Don't go getting famous or anything because you'll die. <laughs> there I'll was t- a I'll big, uh, I don't know if it was, I think it was a book, maybe theory in the 90s. I don't know if you'll remember this, Rich, or not, but around the same time, it was the same summer that, um, undertow came out on mtv this the sober video or whatever from tool yes um around that same time i heard this theory that the government the u.s government basically kidnapped all those people that died at 27 because they were corrupting the youth of america Mm. so they went and got jim morrison out of paris and they got janice joplin and they got Jimi hendrix and they just took them someplace and said no you're not doing this anymore yeah you're not you're not ruining our country I think that was Nixon times or maybe right around that. So um, that was a, that was probably the first conspiracy theory I ever really heard was so, well, about the 27 club. Isn't, isn't Amy Winehouse part of that? I think she is. Yeah. I, I think, think she's so. part of the 27 club too. 
I actually wrote a, uh, I wrote a paper about that when I was in high school about that conspiracy theory about all of that. Oh shit. Really? Uh, there's a great, uh, there's a great writer by the name of Ambrose Bierce that uh, is, is part of that conspiracy theory too. I like that last name. Bierce. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's uh, gosh, what it, an occurrence at Owl Creek bridge, I believe is Owl Creek bridge mm. uh, was, was uh, one of uh, Ambrose Bierce's most famous uh writings and he okay. was included in that ambrose i'm looking that out ambrose pierce yeah uh an occurrence at owl creek bridge so uh was part of he was all part of that conspiracy theory so mm-hmm. i for the longest time believed they all lived on an island that yeah elvis jim morrison uh janice joplin ambrose pierce you know my favorite still i don't know who knows maybe maybe they were there with tupac maybe one of my favorite um, little pop culture theories about Elvis is that he's an extra in Home Alone. Have you heard that one? Yes. When he's standing behind John Candy at the line at the airport and they're trying to rent that car. Yep. Allegedly, it's supposed to be Elvis standing there. And they're like, oh, he, he was an undercover for 20 years and he decided to pop out to be an extra <laughs> in Home Alone. Okay, cool. Yeah, Sounds sure. right. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. That's what makes him fun. That's entirely possible. So, how's the beer? Better than Kiss's music, right? Hmm, way it's, better. I I really really enjoy it. It's it's a really nice, easy drinking, nice and smooth. It, as it warms up, it gets a little sweeter. Yeah, but that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I mean the alcohol, the ABV is low enough that it's not it's not hindering anything, you know. Yep. Um, when it warms up, sometimes uh, I don't know. Sometimes in a stout, that vanilla gets overpowering for me when it warms up. I, I tend to like it when it's cold, but in this one, it really opens up kind of nicely. Mm-hmm. It's just not so sweet. I think if it was extra sweet, we'd be like, mm-hmm. but, yeah. but this one is, it tastes like real vanilla to me, which is yeah. nice. I still think that I would, you know, two, one, maybe two, and then I would have to move on to something else just just because of the vanilla. Yeah. Yeah. I, but isn't it like that with a lot of these that we've done? I mean, it's okay. You want to have one or two of them and that's about, and that's yeah. fine. But then you move on to something else, a different flavor profile or style or, or whatever. Yeah. I, I definitely wouldn't want to get hammered on this. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, I think, I think the brewers understand that too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so for they're, sure. They're making it just the right amount where you're, you're good with yep. it. And you buy a four pack. Is that, I assume that's what we got a four pack of talls. And uh, it, it's perfectly shareable, um, but one one of them is probably enough. How about this? I will. Uh, did, did we we didn't talk about this. We talked about this off before we started. Uh, on the side of their can right here, there's a there's an amp, yeah, and it says "Brew that goes to 11. Yeah, that's a Spinal you, Tap reference. Oh man, I was gonna do a contest there. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, if you could tell me what movie that came from. Oh, we can cut that out. Yeah, you could. Yeah, edit or it. Or it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What's this, this, and that's one of my favorite parts of Spinal Tap, which if you've never seen Spinal Tap, it, it's, it's, it's pretty fantastic. Shame on you if you haven't right. seen Spinal Tap. Now, I'm, now I might retract that because I want to ask Dolan if he's seen Spinal Tap. Dolan, have you seen Spinal Tap? I will tell you this. I have seen Spinal Tap. And I know that I've seen Spinal Tap because we've we've owned Spinal Tap uh, when I was a little kid, little boy. Yeah. Um, but I cannot tell you the plot of Spinal Tap, what exactly happens. I can't really quote anything except for the <sighs> goes to eleven. <laughs> but I'd have to rewatch it for sure. It's one of those that I've seen more than once but when i was really little and haven't seen it since so i've got to i've got to rewatch it for sure so i think we can we can talk about this maybe we can cut it out if it's not relevant but uh, a lot of things that have been online lately like watch parties and like old casts from tv shows have been getting together and talking about their stuff uh, there's a new tv show on it's like a americanized version of a i think it's uh, like a asian show about Basically, it's celebrities watching TV and talking about it. So it's almost like Mystery Science Theater. Mm. Uh, but it might be something fun to do eventually when we all get together again. It's just to like 
watch these classic things and talk about them like in real time. Uh, and Spinal Tap would be a perfect one for it. Now, Rich has seen it. Dolan has seen it. He doesn't quite remember. Uh, Rich, who's your favorite cameo in there's, Spinal Tap? Oh my gosh. I, oh man. Or just person because there's a few i mean there's not a lot of different people in there but there's a few cameos i you know and i'm so bad with names i'm gonna i'm i'm, I'm gonna look it up uh here's here's who i can tell you off the top of my head that's in it okay Nick carvey's in it yes um billy crystal's in it paul schaefer is my favorite paul schaefer from david letterman's band was paul he was he's the record executive and he's he's there where they're like sitting there waiting to send all these autographs and nobody shows up. And he's like, I guys, I'm so sorry. Kick, just, just kick my ass. Just kick my ass. <laughs> Literally right. kick my ass. <laughs> Paul Schaefer does that. Uh, Fran Drescher is in the movie. Yep. As a, as yeah, she's in there. So, and I knew this going into it. Rob Reiner was one of the, was one of the writers, right? He's the director. Yeah. It was his idea. And yeah, that's right. Okay. It was his first movie. Man. Before Holy. Princess Bride and all that yes. stuff. Yes. Holy smokes. Mm. It was the first real, kind of the first mockumentary. Yes. Like without that movie, The Office isn't around or Parks mm-hmm. around. Like any of those shows everybody <laughs> loves to watch, which I've never, never right. really seen. But Billy um, Crystal was the mime. That, that's what I was yeah. looking for. Yeah, yeah, Billy Crystal and Dana Carvey. Oh, my gosh. Together. There we go. Paul Schaefer as incompetent promoter. Yep. Artie Fufkin. Artie. Yep. Artie Fufkin. Artie. He's got a sweet vinyl coat, like a red vinyl coat All that right. he's wearing. This is it right here. Fred Willard. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace, Fred. R.I.P. Yeah. Fred Willard. Fred Willard. God, he was funny. Such a just comedic genius, man. That guy was, he was so just deadpan and funny. Yeah. 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 I, uh, the only other like movies that, that talk about rock bands and their success that I remember watching is, uh, of course, Airheads with Adam Sandler. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. where they hijack yeah. the radio and then, and then, yeah. uh, uh, what's the one with Mark Wahlberg? That weird rock one. Star. Rockstar. Rockstar. That yeah. one wasn't, I didn't like that one that much. Uh, almost was, Famous. What's that? Uh, almost Famous was good. Yeah, Almost Famous. Almost, almost mm-hmm. Famous. I don't think I've seen that one. Uh, oh. that was the, uh, uh, what was the guy, the director, he directed singles. Didn't he, he directed almost Cameron Crow, man. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He, that's his life story. Basically almost famous. He was like 17 years old working for Rolling Stone and went on tour with Led Zeppelin yep. to mm. do a cover story with him. And that's basically his life story of, of what happened. Yeah. And yeah, then he ended up getting married to, uh, one of the girls from heart. Huh. So they're still married to this day, but yeah. Wow. I'm a crow. Mm. To look at that one. I haven't seen that one at all. Mm. Maybe we should do that. Maybe we should, maybe this is a spinoff of the music club. Maybe it's the beer club and the music club. We should get together and watch like music movies or documentaries and talk about them. That would be so cool. We, could we call it the Lone Rangers from, uh, from uh, Airheads? The Lone Rangers? The Lone Rangers. Well, there's three of you. You're not exactly lone. <laughs> How do you I pluralize? Wish I, had, I wish I had Brendan Fraser's hair. Mm. <laughs> oh. one of my, one of, that's one of the best memes that's come out recently. Like, it's the, I'm going to tell my kids that this is whoever. Uh-huh. It's the Lone Rangers, and it's a, I'm going to tell my kids this is Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that Eddie Vedder flannel around the waist. <laughs> pretty good. That's naked pictures of B. Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd look... <laughs> <laughs> hey, just as long as we're not uh, passing around any of those castings or anything like that, then we're good. That's right, plaster casts. <laughs> plaster casts. <laughs> I guess I'm not. I guess I'm not. Uh, I'm not surprised that a yeah. beer named Love Gun yeah. took us to from plaster casts of people's wangs to, to nude B. Arthur to nude pictures of B. <laughs> Arthur. Yeah. Right. Hey, it's rock and roll. <laughs> or a football right. helmet full of cottage cheese. That's right. The, the picture, uh, whatever they asked for, you know, that's uh, on their rider. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Smell uh, the glove. Smell the glove. That was they. The Metallica stole that. 
Really? The, the black album cover. It was mm-hmm. just black. Yeah, true. You're like, well, the, it's not the right color black. How much more black do you want it? Wait, exactly. And they had was, a little snake. Then, well, little yeah, snake if you kind of moved it a little bit. But I had the cassette. Mm. Got that from my friend Nate. I gotta tell you, that's when my that's when my love for Metallica ended. I was that's where, a, mine, that's where mine started. Maybe we had to like pass the baton. Maybe you had to get you know you were like ride yep. the lightning and kill them all. Yeah, took over Master puppets, Master fuel, and all those. Yep, yep. That's my brother too. My brother was like that. So you're you're more my brother's age. Where and and it, yeah, it was for me. It was Master of Puppets and Ride the Lightning and you know Metal Up Your Ass and yeah. You know that that the was all stuff, yeah. Oh, and justice for all, yeah. yeah. What is Dolan? What are you pointing at, Dolan? Yeah. <laughs> what was that? I don't know what's happening back I there. I think you just was going metal up your ass. Mm, that's finger. what he was. Yeah, which was a great a, a great cover, by the way, with the toilet with the with it coming <laughs> yep. up out of the toilet. So, uh, wow. all we, right, love we've gun. Traversed a lot of areas uh, today. We really have. We really have. Hey, it's metal. There's no rules in metal. No, there's not. Okay, so Love Gun on Untapped, two thousand nine hundred and sixty-four check-ins. Where do you think we're at? Three point eight five. You know, I would, I would probably rate it a four. I liked it a lot. Um, three point seven eight. Mm-hmm. Ooh, you're so close. 30, 3.89. Oh. <laughs> so close. But, I mean, it as a cream ale goes, I, I, it's a pretty decent score. You know, for a cream ale, this is one of the ones that, because we've talked about Spotted Cow. Mm-hmm. You know, we've had that on the show. Yeah. And this one is way more vanilla than oh, yeah. most cream ales we get, right? Way so more. So this, this one, like, really amps up the name and it like kind of sticks true to what I think of as a cream ale, but I'm also not mad about it. It was like no. sweet, but not overly sweet. The vanilla was there. It was easy drinking. There was no hops. There was no bitterness. Yep. Yeah. I mean, this would be a, this would be a nice gateway beer and too into somebody that's like, that likes vanilla ice cream or like, you know, oh, yeah. that sort of thing. Like yep. it would be an easy transition to get into this beer. Yeah. Because the base of this is very, just like very light beer flavored, mm-hmm. right? Yep. But, if you take the vanilla out, you've got a like, you've got just a pretty basic standard light beer. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah, I don't mind it at all. I I think it's probably my favorite cream ale that I've had, mm-hmm. probably ever. Um, Spotted Cow, you know, it's good, but you know, it didn't I'm, taste like this. It didn't taste like this. No. Yeah, this is it's got a little bit of oomph to it. A little this is an extra flavor. This is a treat. I, I feel like it's it's a treat. It is. Yeah. yeah, it's it's definitely don't you hate it on it? I, I just on 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 untapped when I I just checked something in and I didn't give it a score. Oh now you have to go in and edit it. What a I gotta thing. go edit it. Because if you don't score it, that means you didn't like it. That's a trick right. that most of my friends use. Yeah. They like oh, to drink really? it, but if they don't they don't rate it, that means they didn't like it. They don't want to give it a bad review. Yeah. Eh, whatever. Yeah. That's worth it. Yeah, I will stick to the. This is my favorite uh, vanilla flavored beer that I've ever had. Wow! So, so there That's you go. Big. Yeah, yeah. So fun. A uh, couple beers coming up here. Hopefully, 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 uh, next week should be the beginning of baseball season. It seems like it's getting we'll close. See. Uh, we'll yeah. see. I know. It seems like it's getting closer. We'll find out. So we're going to do. A baseball themed beer next week. Um, we did one a few months ago, right? In anticipation of yeah, spring, spring training. training. Yeah, that went in the toilet. It sure did. Yeah. So, and then uh, uh, one here coming up over the next couple of weeks. I'm a huge fan of out of Chicago. Uh, Revolution Brewing Company has done some pretty great stuff. Um, yeah. And we were blessed with a, a mixed 12 pack of which I saved three of them, and each one of us will try. That a different one so it'll be a lot of fun yeah that's one of those breweries midwest breweries that are they have a lot of hype and you just can't get it so we're we're happy to have those yeah i'm sure the the anti-hero is their is is their like flagship and i believe there's these are three variations of anti-hero no we have one of the actual anti-hero and then two variations yeah so brian's got the original i took one that uh maybe is a little more bitter yeah 
and uh, I gave one to Dolan, which is a, maybe a little more hazy. All right. Hmm. Cool. So we'll give those a shot over the next couple of weeks. So enjoy your quarantine. Brian, we're not going anywhere for a while. Let's have another beer. Thank you for listening to A Beer with Atlas. Special thanks to our brand team for producing the show. Each episode of A Beer with Atlas is powered by Atlas Medstaff, an industry leader in travel healthcare staffing.